Welcome to the P list. Welcome to the P list. Welcome to the P P list. What's up? Hey, how's everybody holding up? I hope as well as can be expected. Um, this is a P list. P list number twenty-two. Top. 10 ways for pro wrestling people, that's promoters, bookers, wrestlers, managers, referees, ring announcers, um, racist fans in Alabama. (laughs) Sorry, I've been listening to a bunch of live feeds and reading a lot about that uh, lately. Huck is doing a live feed right now, but he was taking too long to get to the fucking point. So I have to knock this fucking thing out because I got things to do today. Um, The top 10 things wrestling people can do um, to take advantage of the Medici effect. Medici effect? Yeah. What the hell is that, Steve? Well... There it is. The Medici Effect. It is a book by Franz Johansson. Uh, I've read this book. Absolutely amazing. Um, You should go check this out. Um, I really think you should. It's one of these things that just helps you out in everyday life. But what is it in a summary? I found a very good summary of it here. The Medici Effect is a phenomenon of innovation that occurs at the intersection of multiple fields, disciplines, and cultures by combining existing concepts to create extraordinary new ideas. The name of this book is derived from the Medici Dynasty, an Italian banking family that came to power in the 14th century. Um, In other words, when companies hire um, somebody who doesn't directly have experience in what they do in order to have a different perspective and new ideas from that person's experience in a different field to help create innovation and new ideas and further enhance the one idea. So it'd be like Microsoft which deals with computer things, hiring an entertainer to come in and consult them um, not to consult them in entertainment matters but to go like oh okay I kind of understand what you're doing here Microsoft have you thought about this have you thought about that have you thought about this way that you can interact and get a different audience have you thought about simplifying the, an explanation about this in order to uh, have that product appeal to people right it's incorporating different things into your life um, to enhance your pro wrestling abilities and experience. Yeah? So we're going to go into that top 10. And it's fucking wackadoo. And a couple of these things I've brought up before, but I thought this was a good time to bring them up again. Some of these are calls to action. Things that you can do right away that'll help, like, trigger stuff within you as a pro wrestler or a pro wrestling person or or really in your everyday life a lot of people have noted that a lot of these p lists and a lot of the videos i pull out go like man that's shit that can apply to my life yes because if you're a pro wrestling person isn't pro wrestling a part of your life hopefully theoretically uh number 10 thing you can do to take advantage of the medici effect cook something the fuck steve what Yeah, Uh, I'm talking, I'm not just talking about fucking whipping up a Kraft Mac and cheese, okay? Pick a complicated recipe. Pick one with techniques unfamiliar to you that you haven't done before, that you'll actually have to learn and try, right? A recipe with multiple steps, right? This isn't crock pot cooking where you just throw a bunch of stuff in a crock pot, turn it on, come back in a few hours, Right. This is something where maybe you have to sear something and then pull it off and finish it in the oven uh, after you season it. Blah, 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 blah. Right. That's one example. Um, Stuff where you have to make judgment calls. Is that how I want it to look? Is that the texture that I want? I taste it. I try it as I'm using it. Okay, that's working, but I think it can use a little more this, that or the other. Right. What you're trying to do is develop instincts that you probably don't already have. And this will bleed its way into your wrestling thinking as well. Right? Um, After you prepare this meal and you have other people try it in addition to yourself, you're going to make this meal two more times in the near future and see if you can improve what you've done each time. So you can see 
what discipline will do. You can see what honing your instincts will do. You can see what changing your judgment will do. And then you'll change your brain. And then you'll find ways to apply this to pro wrestling. We always talk about formulas in pro wrestling. And everybody from Jim Cornette down to the dumbest motherfucker thinks that it's science. Wrestling is not science. It is art. And cooking is art as well. Yeah. It's not to say that there aren't objective standards that should be a, try to be attained. Objective ways to get things accomplished but there's a nuance and a judgment and instincts that are required and to be the best or to be better you have to develop this ability to create these instincts within yourself so cook something and then cook it two more times number nine poems the fuck steve yeah i want you to find these three poems and read them. Um, none of them are very long. And maybe you've already looked at them at school, but now you're a grown folk. And the discipline of looking at these poems who are written by people who are better wordsmiths than you are right now, um, and forcing your brain to think of things in an academic way will start to jar some things loose in that brain of yours and help you out. Um, during periods of isolation, like we're having experiencing right now, all of us, right? The danger is your brain turning to mush. And the danger is you become narrow in your thinking instead of expansive. So when's the last time you looked at and analyzed a poem? And yes, I would consider a rap song a poem or a music a poem, sure. But I want you to look at these three poems. Battle of Birmingham by Dudley Randall. Suicide's Note by Langston Hughes. And if these names are not ringing familiar to you, you are not educated enough. And you should go look these poems up. Battle of Birmingham by Dudley Randall. Suicide's Note by Langston Hughes. Nothing Gold Can Stay by Robert Frost. Three very different poems. Suicide's Note is literally a sentence long. Battle of Birmingham has a few stanzas to it. Nothing Gold Can Stay by Robert Frost. Not very long either. But the ideas are very powerful. Every word choice, incredibly deliberate. What will this do to your brain? It will make you a better promo cutter. It will make you a better interpreter of events. It will make you, hopefully, a smarter and more well-rounded person. Maybe you'll read Battle of Birmingham and go like, what the fuck is this referencing? And then you'll do a little research and then it'll open you up to a whole period in American history. Maybe you'll read Suicide's Note and you'll go like, holy shit, Langston Hughes is motherfucking deep. I'm going to look into that guy's life. You should. Especially if you were a person of color in the wrestling business, but really anybody, right? Nothing gold can stay. Pro wrestling is a young person's business for the most part, but that lesson in Nothing Gold Can Stay, you need to have it. If you want other poems recommended to you by me, I used to teach composition and literature, and I used to teach literature in general, um, poetry, short stories, novels, all that kind of shit. I'm happy to recommend more for you, but I think that's a good starter kit. Battle of Birmingham, Suicide's Note, Nothing Gold Can Stay. Number eight. You've heard me talk about this before and reference it often, the Kohlberg stages of moral development, that pyramid with six levels, right? Uh, avoiding punishment, the lowest level of morality, self-interest, doing things that benefit you as your reason for doing them, good boy attitude, having people um, basically give you props. How many people are living at that level in pro wrestling? Um, a lot, yeah. Uh, law and order morality, doing things because it's the rules and it's the law. That's where your parents probably live. Social contract, do things because we're all having to share this space together and you do things in order to not harm anybody. This is the appeal that's currently going on about CV, right? It's not enough that you can withstand the illness. It's that you may pass it on to somebody else who is more vulnerable, that's an appeal to the social contract. The problem is most people operate on self-interest or avoiding punishment level. 
Yeah. And then principle, doing the right thing regardless of consequence and knowing what the right thing is to do. Study that shit. Um, yes, it can work its way into a wrestling angle or a wrestling gimmick. Um, but more than that, it's just good to be aware. Knowing things, the Medici effect, it benefits you. So knowledge is truly power. YouTube, watching a lot of this shit anyway, right? Um, and you may watch any or all of the following three things that I'm going to say. But if not, then I'm schooling you, and that's awesome. If you already know about these three things, great. You can still look at them with fresh eyes. Epic rap battles of history. They've done years and years of these things. And so you can go down a rabbit hole and watch a million of them. But um, the way that language is used, the way things are layered, the way things are designed for an effect, um, how sometimes the rap battles are like two minutes or less, and sometimes they're four minutes or more. How do they structure things? How have they found ways to incorporate what you know as an audience member, but not exclusively speak to common knowledge in order to get people to kind of look into things deeper? And the more that you know, the more you get out of them, which is a great lesson about life as well. Uh, Chael Sonnen, a uh, guy that I love a lot, the best trash talker in MMA history. Um, his channel is fantastic. And actually, the, the uh, trajectory of his career is one that pro wrestlers should pay attention to. He was a guy that never won a world title in a major promotion, yet um, has made quite a career. Missteps along the way? Absolutely. But he's a guy who who comments about pro wrestling and MMA in a really unique, smart way. Uh, I think he's a guy that a lot of you would benefit from. And, uh, and honest trailers, honest trailers, not only are they hilarious, but they're the best kind of comedy because it feels very true. And the reason they can do that is because they boil a movie or a TV series down to its essence and then point out things about it that even you didn't realize on an early viewing, right? Their ability to disseminate information and then present it back to you in an entertaining way is what pro wrestling is. And you could benefit greatly from going down that honest trailers rabbit hole. Chael Sonnen, Epic Rap Battles of History. Number six of the things that you can be doing to uh, increase the Medici effect in your life as it pertains to pro wrestling, The Wire. Um, anybody who's got a brain in their fucking head would put The Wire uh, in the top three television shows ever. Uh, I could not agree more. It's fucking brilliant. Even the season I don't care for as much is still better than almost everything else made. Um, the wire, the moments, the characters, all unforgettable. But when you watch the wire, whether you're doing it for the first time or the 10th time, um, I want you to look at it through these three lenses in order to really glean as much as you can about it intellectually. Okay. The choices that people make and how it affects not only them, but everybody else. The weight of choices in The Wire is one of the reasons it's the, one of the greatest shows ever, if not the greatest show ever. The notion of morality. Take that Kohlberg's pyramid, mix it in with this, right? Who's operating on the basis level? Who's operating in the middle level? Who's operating, who's attempting to have principle in a world that seemingly defies it and punishes it, right? and power. There's the power that comes at the uh, wrong end of the barrel of a gun. There's the power that comes politically. There's the power that comes through media. There's the power that comes with how you present yourself to the world. There's the power in truth and the power in the ability to shape and mold the truth. The wire's got all of it. And from interpersonal relationships, from people seemingly at the lowest part of the socioeconomic ladder, all the way to the top level politician on that show, everybody has power. And the relation of the power relationships between everybody on that show is what fuels and drives the show. 
Choices, Morality, Power, The Wire. Number five on the things that you can do to create the Medici effect for you in professional wrestling is applying this writing lesson that I was taught to by one of my favorite writing teachers and how it applies to almost everything that you're doing creatively and otherwise in your life. Very smart man. Yeah. Ian McMillan um, is one of the best writers that I've ever read. Um, Ian McMillan is one of the most gentle and intelligent men that I've ever met in my life. Um, he's fucking great, man. And he taught me this. Anything that you put out into the world creatively should go through three processes. Write it to get it down. If you think of an idea or you think of something to say in a promo or you think of an aspect of your character or you think of something that you want to book or you think of a different clever way to promote, write it down right away. Get it down right away. Then you edit it to refine it and make it perfect. Cut away the things that don't matter. Refine the things that do. Get it razor sharp and perfect. And then go over that idea again so you can present it in such a way that it makes it seem like you just thought of it. That's what great writing is. That's what great athletes are. You're Michael Jordan. You fucking figured something out on the basketball court. Then he fucking practices it to the point where it's perfection. Then... He adds some fucking style to it, which makes it seem like it all comes naturally. That's genius. That's what genius is. Genius isn't being perfect the first time you do anything. Genius is making it seem like you're perfect the first time you do anything. Does that resonate? It does, if you're smart. Number four, way to create the Medici effect for a pro wrestling person. The legend of the Drunken Master or Drunken Master 2 as it's sometimes called. Jackie Chan's finest fucking work. Him in his absolute fucking prime. Right? There's three major fights. There's a whole bunch of fights. It's a fucking kung fu movie. Right? But there's three major fights that I want you to pay attention to. There's the first fight where he's imbibing alcohol... <laughs> at his mom's request to win the first fight. This is a great fight to watch in terms of how to do comedy heavy and still get a story across and still engage emotionally. Because that's what wrestling is. It's about engaging emotionally in people, right? And it has the flavor of a new match, right? What are the two jobs of a new person in pro wrestling thing? Get your gimmick over and show that you can work. And Jackie Chan does both in that. The gimmick, the more I drink, the more drunk I get, the better I fight and the more interesting the fight is, right? Um, does he show he can work? Absolutely. The choreography in that first fight might be the best out of all three of the fights that I'm going to talk about. But nonetheless, you get all the conventions down in that first fight that they're able to use for the rest of the movie. The drinking fight. Second fight is like a mid-card fight. The axe gang fight, where all of those guys with the fucking axes come in and they literally take a whole building down trying to kill Jackie Chan and his friend, right? There's deadly consequences. In the mid-card, your job is to get into feuds and to try to steal the show. And this one is the most spectacular fight. Literally, the whole building comes down. There's all these fucking gimmicks in the fight where he takes the freaking bamboo pole and it shreds at the end and he uses it to cut everybody up. And the friend is helping him by like spraying stuff on him, spitting water on him so the pole can slide and he can fight all these guys as they're swinging with their axes trying to kill him. Awesome. And then that final fight that's you once you, if you've never seen this fight, you will watch it and go, holy shit, how many people ripped this fucking fight off? Incredibly influential. I've seen everything from fucking John Wick movies to Marvel and all this stuff take elements of this last fight. Watch it and tell me I'm fucking wrong, right? That final fight, 
what are your jobs? To create the hype and live up to it. And that last fight certainly lives up to the fucking hype. And it successfully incorporates things that we've seen before in the movie. Not only just the moves that he uses, not only this notion of like, when I'm drunk, I fight better. So in the last fight, how drunk does he get? You'll fucking see, right? But um, there are comedy elements in that last fight, but they're used to create a maximum emotional cathartic effect. The fight is done very earnest and seriously, but the comedy moments inevitably shine through and it creates for a great overall experience. There's something there to be learned as far as your pro wrestling matches. Number three, how to create this Medici effect, Scarface. Fuck yeah, Scarface. Why Scarface? It's a great movie. Duh. However, it has elements of these three things. The hero's journey. Oh, hero's journey. More of that fucking academic horse shit, Steve. Yes. Fuck you. Right? Ordinary world. Call to adventure. Refusal of the call. Meeting with the mentor. Crossing the threshold. That's all in the ordinary world. And then as the movie advances into act two, you're in a special new world, right? Tests, allies, enemies. Approach the innermost cave, the place of most danger. That's where he's confronting Frank, right? The ordeal. And then the reward, seizing of the sword. That's the montage of Tony's life getting better. And then we're back in the ordinary world. The road back. Now he's the king, right? The resurrection. He's trying to find himself. He's trying to get hungry again. He realizes that they're lazy, fat, and soft. And he also sees being a bad guy in the context of America in general. And then the return of the elixir. He snorts all that fucking coke and dies. But not only is Scarface a great telling of the hero's journey kind of put on its ear, it's also an American rags to riches story put on its ear. And by, by putting it on its ear, you're able to more clearly see the archetypes that it's invoking. But ultimately, the best thing about Scarface is that it's a Greek tragedy, wherein your fatal flaw undoes all the good works. Check out Scarface, see it through the lens of the hero's journey, the American rags to riches story, and a Greek tragedy. And if you're not quite sure what those three things are, look them up. Knowledge, Medici effect. It'll benefit you. Believe me. Number two way to create the Medici effect. The Karate Kid movies and Cobra Kai. Like wrestling in the modern era, what we're trying to do is to take archetypes that have been established from earlier for a hundred years and the foundation of the world that pro wrestling created. See, the problem with Jim Cornette and old school thinking guys is they're of the mind. If we could just go back to how we used to do it, then it'll be good. The problem is that doesn't exist in any artistic form ever in the history of ever. You have to adapt. But at the same time, there's a whole font of things to use for the modern wrestler that he can use to enhance himself, his matches, the cards themselves. There are tricks that we've seen bookers use that are already used and then they just update them. But you can do even better than that. And then there's promotional tricks that have been around since the days of P.T. Barnum and even before that, that you can continue to modernize and update. Yeah. So Karate Kid movies. The first one, legendary. The second one, I personally love the most, but in the eyes of most people, it took a bit of a downturn. The third one is shit. Nonetheless, the series Cobra Kai has taken this fertile ground of the Karate Kid movies and found a way to modernize it, update it, and do it in a completely different form. Television is not the same as movies at all as far as how they do storytelling. We'll talk about that at another time, right? But that's what you're trying to do in pro wrestling. You're trying to take the archetypes and the foundations that pro wrestling has left for you, and you're going to modernize it, enhance it, and yes, improve it. 
In the same way, Cobra Kai, in many ways, is superior to the Karate Kid's movies themselves. So check it out. Check out the stories being told. Karate Kid was not about female stories, for example. But the Cobra Kai series is. Complicated, nuanced female characters. That's what we'd love to see more in pro wrestling. Am I wrong? I am not. And finally, the number one way that you can induce the Medici effect in professional wrestling for yourself and the pro wrestling people that you love. Neil Gaiman's Make Good Art Speech. Um, it was done in 2012. If you want to look it up, it was a commencement speech that he gave at the Philadelphia's University of the Arts. I'll sum up the most interesting part of it to me but you should listen to the whole thing you will probably get other things as a person who's actively performing and engaging as a booker a promoter a wrestling person right he had this rule the two-thirds rule there is your behavior there is your punctuality and there is the quality of your work and if two out of those three things are a positive in the eyes of others, then you can get away with the third being a failing. But if you can have all three going on all the time, then you will lead your field. In other words, if you're an asshole, but you're always on time and your work is stellar, people will put up with the fact that you're an asshole. If you're somebody that people like, but you're late, if you're always on running late on shit and you're not 100% reliable when it comes to time, but your work is good, if you're a person that they like and your work is good, they'll tolerate you being late. And if you're somebody that everybody likes and you're always on time and super reliable, they'll put up with work that isn't quite as good. How does this apply to your life? How does this apply to the people at your job? How does this apply to pro wrestling? It's everything! Now imagine if you have all three. You're ahead of almost everybody. But if you don't have two out of the three, then fucking fix yourself. 10 things that you can do 10 things that you can learn, 10 things that you can watch with a more academic, intellectual eye that will make you a better pro wrestler, a better booker, better promoter, better wrestling person in general, a better person in general. So go out and fucking do it. This has been The P-List.